What's up everyone, my name is Alex. I'm one of the co-founders of myinvestingclub.com and I wanna let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's gonna be available at myinvestingclub.co. The link is gonna be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. Yeah, guys, I took, I took the day off today. I was just, I was just, just ridiculously tired and no, dude, I was fucking tired. Like I didn't, I, like I didn't sleep at all the night before and like I didn't get home until like nine ish PM and that's like, that's late for me. And I like, I didn't sleep at all the day before and I was like, you know what, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna realize one of the benefits of being a trader and skip a day. <laughs> so today is going to be a continuation of the, of last week's webinar. Last week's webinar, I in, intended it to be entries, exits, risks, and target. It's like the core four things of trading. And I, I, we only had time to do entries and exits because I'm a rambler. So, I, so I'm sorry for that, but uh, we're gonna finish this time. Anyway, so we're gonna be going over risks and targets. So today, obviously, uh, Tom is, is joining us and, and it's so, like Tom, Tom, Tom's style of trading is so good. Both Tom and Bear, like Tom's, Tom and Bear strategies are both perfect for the new trader. Like that's why it's like I don't I don't exactly know the skill level of of the of the audience that comes here typically, but it's perfect for the for the the trader trying to gain consistency. So yeah, so aim. I just want to go over. I actually didn't trade this chart. I was I was trading another chart at the time. I forget which one. But um, I just wanted to go over this chart. Like this is a this is like just a perfect chart and. There's so many things I want to show in this chart. And I was looking at this chart and this chart looks like a work of art. And like, I talked about this prior in the, in the middle of the week. And like, I really want to go over this here. There is so much to learn about this chart aim on three thirty. Like this is a chart that you guys should go back and save. Like this is a, I saved it. I named it aim perfect chart. Like this is what I want to go over in this chart. Like I wish I would have traded this. This chart had a morning spike. Right, it had a morning spike, um, and it went straight into three. A, a little shy, a little shy of three. Um, but like this could be considered a first resistance trade. You could also consider this the first time it actually gets to three. There's a first resistance trade. Shut up, Harry. We're not there yet. Um, <laughs> they, <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> I'm down, Harry. Anyway, Harry, calm down, Harry. Rip. Anyway, so yeah, there's a perfect first bounce on this trade, right? We get a first, we get a nice push up, and we get a perfect first bounce on this trade, right on VWAP. Like it's perfect. Uh, perfect first bounce straight up, and now you have like a little perfect simplest short here. And this is this right here proves why on the first bounce you always take some before, right? You always take some before. Uh, the high day break because it might not happen. So you want to take your profits here. This is also why if it's, you know, on a simple short, wait for the top to form and you short here. This hold right here is the reason why on the simplest short, you always have some covers down here in case this hold and it doesn't, like the simplest short and the first bounce are kind of mirrors, right? So you have a perfect first bounce, you have a perfect simplest short. You know, at the end, like at either the longs are going to win or the shorts are going to win, but these are the entries. Like if you're short bias, you short here. If you're long bias, you get the first bounce. You have a perfect like double bottom VWAP hold consolidation right here. It's holding and then it rips up. It's a perfect VWAP double bottom for the long thesis. And then you get this push over the higher high, you know, and then you get a lower high that's holding VWAP. Like this is perfect, like for an entry kind of right here. You know, you get a push up the first time it hits three, you can kind of see this first resistance kind of trade right here. And this is the reason why if you take the first resistance short, this is why it has to be an immediate cover, right? Like there's just so much yes on this chart. It's like every, like everything, like all the reason why I have my rules is, is on this chart. Like this is why, you know, if I short a first resistance here at three, this is why I don't hold it because you know, like it's a front side short and you better front side cover it or it's going to, you know, it's going to rip or not going to rip. But I mean, the chance to rip is just too great. Right. And then you come back here. I mean, Bao said it uh, today. I saw, I looked back in the chart and he said, Hey, the first time a stock gets to VWAP, you know, a long drop to VWAP, the first time it's normally a buy. 
right? And if you want to zoom out, this is like a little mini, this is like a little mini, uh, oh, sorry, a major, like a, this is a first bounce on, on this, like this little time frame. If you want to consider this a big, larger time frame move. This is a first bounce on the larger time frame, right? This is just a larger time frame first bounce. There was one more thing I wanted to, to mention about this. And oh yeah, like, like I took a first bounce trade this week on SFET and it didn't work because there was like, uh, there was like a little consolidation right before my entry, which is always crappy. Bow talked about it. Like when there's orders that block your entry, it's really annoying. Like if you want to imagine like whatever your time frame is, if you want to imagine like, oh, here's a little move from, from like here, from like 290 up to 340, you would consider this to be a little first bounce area, like 310 right here by the niche. Why doesn't this 310 work? Well, because it consolidates here at 320 first. That's the same kind of, like, this is the reason why my, like, my SFET first bounce this week kind of failed, is this kind of stuff happened. So like you can see it, how like this kind of consolidation ruins the first bounce for like this kind of move. There's just so much on this chart that like I love to, like a lot of my rules and the reason why I have my rules is on this chart. Anyways, I just want yeah. to go, kind of rent about that chart. It's a very pretty chart. Hey, Pop, it wasn't on my radar at all. I mean, for sure. Right, uh, because I think the chat room was on it, and uh, also I was focusing on uh, APT and HTAX, uh, so I, I didn't uh, uh, actually um, have any plan on trading it. But then, uh, you know, the, the zombie hour came, and when I see that it kept, you know, dipping at view app right there, and I saw that it's like um, lower highs, and then I just like the wedge right there for me and so i said all right let me put some here at uh three point uh, I, I i believe it was like 3.6 uh risking like 10 cents basically right under view app and you know my my goal is is just to cover and uh just uh to sell into that resistance like 3.8 that was my plan like 30 cents uh i was like you know small shares just like 1000 shares uh but it's just like a small and uh, you know quick few hundred bucks. But uh, you know I'm glad uh, you know I'm glad that I had the right thesis uh, because it, it tried to break under view app right, but it's just like dipping, dipping, and then it pulled the wedge right there, and so that's why it gave me the confidence. I'm you you know I'm I'm not good with long, and and usually the the one that uh, I I really want to have a little bit more size on is that the one dip below view app reclaim and then dip back to view app and then you know uh, goes off from there you know break breaking that 3.8 or whatever i mean if this one dip to like 3.2 i would say 3.2 and reclaim back and then just put the wedge right there i would you know probably have really you know more size on at 3.8 the breakout but since it didn't so i just you know took uh, the easy you know trade on that one yeah, but you know, I'm not an expert in long, so. Yeah, well, let me, let me just add something there. Like, yeah. Harry goes over this in his video, and, like, and it's funny, he went over it like the day before I was gonna go over it, so I didn't have to. But he talks about that, that's when the, like it, as a longer, you really, really, really want the stock to show its cards like that. Like, that's the terminology Harry and I use is showing the cards. Like when the stock yeah. flashes down, proves, shows you the cards. Dude, there's support yeah. right there. And, and flashes back immediately, you know, in, like right then and there, that's the bottom. You can buy risking that comfortably, safely. You, you, you're really sure it's going to fly up. Flash, Flash figured that one out and messaged me. He's like, hey, this is a setup I like to do. And I'm like, dude, that's one of all, I like that setup too. Like, like, like you said, if it would have <laughs> flashed down and came right back, like it doubles the setup's value. Yeah, I mean, there's still a lot to learn for long. So, but I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to do is, uh, since I'm not good with it, right? So I try to put all the odds in my favor. It's like a hot check, you know, good volume overview app near ten thirty. You know, it's like I'm, I'm new at long, so I just want to play it safe. Uh, it's like I'm, I'm not with, I'm, I'm not even good with first bounce. I mean, what I want to see is stock is really go parabolic. You know, try to try to break but couldn't so i just joined the trend and basically you know took some of it that's all i agree man i like it do you one shot any specific setups 
I sometimes do. Yeah, sometimes I like to just one shot, but um, normally those are on like low hanging fruit setups. I, I'm more, I'm much more likely to one shot a low hanging fruit than I am any other setup. Just because the the setups I like to one shot are the setups where I'm really confident in a line, or where I have to be confident in a line, like or an area, to where you know, like kind of like what you did at with IFRX today. That's the kind of time where I'll just one shot something, like yeah. or or one to two shot where like. It's, I, I don't have, I'm not very good at scaling low hanging fruit. I like to just put an order there, get the fill and wait for it to go to my target. No, I, I FRX today wasn't like one shot for me. Right, it was right. like, I just, you know, split the covering into two pieces, but you know, the entry was one shot, one kill basically. Yeah. So on a long side, here's the deal. I can't like a one shot trade I will take is like a VWAP reclaim trade. However, what I like to do instead, and this is just my personality, and I've ta I talked to someone on the phone about this today, what I prefer to do instead on the long side, just because I, for, like, psychologically, it's really hard to, like, short lows or buy highs, like, buy breaks or short breakdowns on the breakdown or on the breakout with full side. It's very fucking tough, like, psychologically. So normally I like to put the size on there. So I typically try to ease into the trade like 50% or a little bit less. And then on the break of the re is where I try to put the size on. Like, so it'll, it's like two shots, but like, you know, I, I only put the size on, on the one entry, but it, it just helps me psychologically to know that I'm not entering my average here. I'm, a, you know, I'm adding to the position here. I don't know. It just, I prefer to do that. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Go to bed, Tom. You're probably exhausted. Yeah, bro. Got to hit the bat now. So tomorrow I can overtrade. <sighs> exactly, dude. Exactly. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.